Hi everybody, my name is Michael Staley and thanks to General Tampon and Man Buddha One, I was inspired to make my own uh, creation and so I've laid out the beginnings of uh, my project. So here it is. So I'm in my garage and uh, the first thing I did was I went on Craigslist and got a free pair of crutches. Uh, I went to the discount fabric store and they had burlap that was $2.99 a yard and it was 60% off so I had to buy it. So I've got about 15 yards of the brown and 3 yards of these other colors and just had to have this uh, fur. I'm not sure how I'm going to use it yet but this fur just feels feels real actually it feels like you're petting a nice Persian cat <laughs> and let's see I also found a couple of pieces of uh, fabric uh, flowy fabric in green that I thought hmm, that might work and got a uh, leather gladiator um, skirt that I thought I might use I might either wear it underneath or cut these pieces off and use them somehow. Now I know that uh, everything that I've seen on YouTube so far is uh, on stilts however I have power risers which are jumping stilts. Uh, I can jump pretty high and run pretty fast enough and standing up uh, I'm about seven and a half feet tall. I'm already six two so uh, now let's see all of these materials are um, laying on a huge piece of foam that the day after I saw General Tampon's video on YouTube, I found this right outside my uh, uh, apartment in San Francisco. So I'm currently right now in the garage. Let's see. Uh, this is a Mardi Gras mask that a friend of mine gave me. It was red and white and I used appliance paint, uh, appliance spray paint to s paint it uh, so it's got a nice smooth uh, coating and not sure how I'm going to work with this but we'll see. Now also I found that using an electric knife is the easiest in uh, cutting the foam. It's just it slices right through it like butter. So this is the beginning of my project. These are so far some of my materials. I've got some bleached and unbleached, um, what is it, cheesecloth uh, that uh, is in the house. And let's see, these foam pieces right there I'm going to reshape and put in right here because experience tells me that after walking on these power risers for a while that kind of hurts the shin right right uh, below the knee so there we have it uh, the beginnings of my materials I'm sure I'm going to be using needle and thread and a sewing machine but so let's get started all right all right so I measured and I've spent some time trying to figure this out engineering wise uh, that I'm going to split this, split the foam halfway th through and then all the way across and so then this will become the cover for this stilt then this will become this cover for that stilt then with this half here I'm gonna cut that in half and there should be enough of obviously for each um, crutch and I've also extended the crutch to its um, longest length which is about I believe five feet I'd have to measure it again and this piece of foam over here I'm going to split in two because it is it's rather thick as you can see uh, and once I do, once I split that with the electric knife, which I'll show you here, um, each one of those pieces will become the shoulder piece 
for the upper half of the crutch. All right, so here we go to cutting. So here is just a quick status update here. Uh, I've got the crutches left and right and all I did was cut the foam and I used because I'm very thrifty just the tape that I had on hand which is just packing tape and wrapped them around, wrapped it around on both so I think I've got a nice even shape on both and up top uh, once I put that underneath my arm and angle the crutches out, that piece that is jutting out right there makes a nice shape. So I just need to take the electric knife and cut off that tip, round it off. Uh, now, as far as the power risers, these are the power risers and I uh, obviously cut the uh, foam and what I did was I took an old snap a shirt that has snaps on it cut those snaps out and this is what I did so you see how there's uh, material still left uh, where the snap was is connected to the material and then the opposing here and I just sewed it deep into the foam with a needle and thread uh, and it's pretty darn secure on there so I'll show you here so I'm pulling on that so and here is the end well I wish I could zoom out here um, here are the one of the power risers that are covered so let me try to get this better here so you've got below up top it's snapped in the back and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this in various shades of burlap and install a zipper in each on the back of each of these so that these the cover can be removed and I can wear these without the costume so that's my next project see you in the future Side. so as you see i've got the my arms you know the crutches covered in the burlap and then i got cheesecloth uh from a discount fabric store i uh, got about six seven yards for about five six bucks i dyed it using like leftover coffee uh over about a week and then added some water and left it overnight took it out of the water or took it out of the coffee and then uh, wrung it out, draped it outside in my garden, let it dry, dried real super quick. Um, let's see, I actually have some notes here. <laughs> so, uh, and then of course I attached all of the, the fabric uh, and the cheesecloth with just the glue gun. So I cut some holes here and there and ripped and on the front side here I made sure that I put a flap over the zipper so I can get in and just tuck that into a pocket now uh, this is my shirt so I started out with just a button-down brown cotton shirt uh, and then I glued the um, burlap to it Put some cheesecloth on it and rip some rip some holes here give it that worn look and then one second here then i added that big piece of fabric the fur so this fur i love it it looks great on uh, down on the bottom here I tucked it up under and so when I walk this actually moves a little so it kind of looks like a, a tail sort of and on the sides here whoop, on the sides here I added a piece of 
burlap did the same thing with the cheesecloth. And then this, I don't know, I can't really get it with the camera here. This will actually um, drape over the foot piece right here. So, and last but not least, is my mask. So, this is what I did with the mask. I put some cheesecloth underneath. So, I have two layers of cheesecloth so I can still see through, but people can't see my face. On the, in the back, I used some tan-colored cotton uh, cloth that I cut into three different pieces. And so, that covers the back of my neck and the strap for the mask. Uh, let's see, I used that big piece of cloth, or silk cloth, over this, and when I, when we tested, I, it just covered the entire back of the fur piece. So what I did was I cut it up the back to, into two pieces, so now it drapes on either side of the mask, and then I added some beads just to kind of I don't know. I like, I like it. It kind of gives it a humanoid kind of feel to it. And the eyebrows are actually made from peacock feathers. So not the very tip of the feather, but all of the other strands. So, and in the wind, they're going to look like this. So I think that look is really cool. So, okay, so now that you've seen all, all of the parts, here are some uh, troubleshooting things that uh, occurred. Uh, if you remember earlier, earlier in the video, I had put the snaps here and the snaps were not strong enough to hold the back of the foam piece together. Uh, so I did some holes, a little eyelet, use some tan colored string to just tie it and when I was practicing with my friend Juan just putting it all together it just totally didn't work so that idea was scrapped now I did you talk I did talk about installing zipper so here's the zipper on one side and then the other here and that idea was is pretty smart however it was uh very very hard to pull both sides together and zip and get it zipped down uh from Juan's perspective because I couldn't do it myself so what we decided to do was uh scrap the the eyelet scrap the snap and went to the discount fabric place in the mission and got these very large safety pins. Uh, I used the silver and we can see about the gold. And up top here, when this is gonna be wrapped around the power riser and I've got the pants on, we're gonna run the safety pin through the fabric and the foam of the piece and through my jeans and then the extra strips that were on the, on the legs of the pants will hide all of the safety pins. So it's actually going to be the safety pins that are keeping the leg piece on the power riser. So they're on the power riser. Also the support piece around the shin does have some foam padding so i'm going to put it through all of those materials and through test runs it worked so it's like 